Welcome home, big sister. Serial Experiments Lane is about a 14-year-old schizophrenic femme cell made in 1998, the same year when the iMac was released, Google was founded, the internet became more accessible, and Viagra became FDA approved. The anime has a unique use of symbolism, white noise, creepy art style, eye-killing brightness, philosophies about existentialism, divinity, identity, and questions our reality. Our main character is Lean, who goes out nightclubbing with her friends despite being middle schoolers. She has a sick gaming PC that can run cyberpunk and Adobe Premiere without it crashing but most importantly reaches ascension by uploading her collective unconscious mind into the internet becoming god I don't know how as Carl realizing that it's traumatizing for a mortal to become Morgan Freeman and Bruce Almighty as you go through the slow burn acid trip that is this anime the purpose of this anime is not only just to be another edgy psychological thriller it is important predicting the future of the industrial society but most importantly paved the way for the drain gang movement paved the way for fem cells like me, giving depression and existential dread to weebs who watched it and look at Young's persona as fact. If you guys are interested in watching this anime, it does have an acquired taste. It's free on YouTube, both subbed and dubbed. I recommend the dubbed or else you're gonna miss stellar performances like this. I thought somebody was in here. Someone else? Who? Lane, you know who I'm talking about. Your little imaginary friend or something like that you have now let's get into a deep dive into this anime the show starts with a girl unaliving herself. Lane, a middle schooler, tells everybody in the train to shut up. Everybody does. It's a mysterious email from a dead girl saying that she met God. His name is Deus in the Wired. R slash atheism must be flipping their shit right now. Then she ventures into the trippy, incomprehensible cesspool that is VR chat. I like that. Are you ready to take it to the next level? <laughs> Confused? Good because that's the first episode. There's this new drug in the streets called Excella that boosts brain function. It's so good, there's a guy ascending. Lane checks her email, then her sister walks in, asking if she's talking to her imaginary friend again. This is the first hint we get that Lane is schizophrenic. Some girls are invited Lane into a nightclub called Siberia, even though they're like 14, saying that they saw Lane at the nightclub the other day and she was hitting the cleanest moves. Lane reluctant, but then peer pressure, Lane goes into a nightclub with her new friends. There's a shooter at the club killing people, shooter losing his mind because he's high as fuck. Lane walks up to the man, tells him some trippy shit, then shooter kills himself in front of everyone. But don't worry, nobody was traumatized except Lane. Lane is getting stalked by some mysterious men in black. Lane's sister, Mika, questions what the hell is Lane doing. Mika asks her dad what's going on with Lane. Like every parent tells her to fuck off, I'm reading my newspaper. People have been mysteriously dying from an online video game called Phantoma. Lane told her dad she's gonna become God by metamorphosizing into the Wired, saving everyone from the death game, and her dad was just like, okay, you do you. Lane has been hearing mysterious voices from someone who calls himself God. Mika opens up a napkin that contains a message that sends her into some sort of frenzy, losing her shit. Mika asks Lane if she was in Shibuya. Lane says nothing, realizing she can't rely on her schizophrenic internet addicted sister until she becomes schizophrenic herself living a nightmare completely going insane wondering what the hell is going on while this is happening lane is asking alexa for jokes mika comes home realizing her soul has been ripped out of her body and something else is controlling her me after taking 40 benadryls lane goes to the mall with her friends they spot a kid praising the sun a naked lane appears in the sky of course tripping the fuck out she goes home, googles when do the shrooms wear off. Lane visits Professor Hodgson, or the child killer scientist. Professor talks about his failed science experiment, raising the collective unconscious of children. Children are all connected by some psychic force that binds them together like 5G towers, trying to discover the secrets of the human mind. And not so much of a big surprise. The facility blows up, killing the child test subjects. Lane's gaming rig gets blown up by the knights. Oh, I forgot to mention the knights, they're the villains of this show. 
The Knights of the Eastern Calculus sounds like a high school math team. The Knights are the hackers that manipulated Lane trying to make her join their team to take over the Wired. They're also the ones responsible for her soul killing Mika. The Men in Black reveal themselves they are looking for the Knights as they are a threat to national security. The Men in Black take Lane to whoever this guy is, the CEO of Tachibanda Labs. Now pay attention because this guy explains the plot so you don't have to figure it out. He explains that the knights are trying to blur the line between reality of the world and the world inside the wired and if that happens whoever controls the wired controls the world and lane is the key to their plan he tells Lane that she isn't real and her existence within the Wired isn't a natural phenomenon. He explains that her family isn't real and everything about her life is a fabrication. This freaked Lane out, making her reveal her second personality, Lane of the Wired, or Sigma Lane. Tells him to fuck off, goes home so she can play EverQuest or whatever. She goes to a virtual strip club hearing the rumors about Protocol 7. Lane tries talking to her parents asking if they are real. They don't say shit. Alice or Arasu confronts Lane if she spread any shit about her. Another version of Lane appears, and she appears to be evil. Evil Lane was the one who spread all the rumors of Alice nutting over her teacher. The mysterious voice that kept pestering Lane tells her to use the godlike power she possesses to delete any memories of what happened. What a load of garbage! A draining alien appears in her room for what reason I do not know. Taro, who is one of the knights, gets interrogated by being forced to listen 100 gex. Play track 44. What the fuck? The schizophrenia is getting real. Taro reveals that the device that was handed to him can rewrite pre existing memories. The Earth makes this constant electric frequency that affects human minds. Eri Masami hypothesized that humans can connect to each other in an unconscious level using the frequency without the help of a computer. This was Protocol 7. He was called a madman, then kill himself. Or did he? Deus, who's actually Eri, ascended death and became a program, claims he's quote unquote god who created Lane and tries to convince Lane to kill herself because she's omnipresent and having a body that's omnipresent is useless. Of course, everybody knows that. Lane responds with You used to call me on my stuff. Dad reveals he's not her real father, leaving to go fishing for the rest of eternity. Lane has had enough, assassinated the knights by literally doxing them to the CIA. Alice, after experiencing 10 episodes of literal traumatic, confusing, reality bending, draining acid shit, figures out there's something wrong with Lane. Oh my god, she's just like me. Lane has a crush on Alice, but has no Riz. Lane calls Eri a filthy liar she knew all along because Eri's logic has more flaws than a self-driving Tesla. He tried forming a body to prove his existence which completely contradicted what he claims. Lane fucking kills Eri. Alice, who's reasonably traumatized after witnessing a literal digital ghost trying to force itself into existence, so to create a happy ending and to prevent humans from playing God, Lane erases all recollection of Lane because of what isn't remembered never happened. It was a happy ending for everyone, except Lane. To put it where you don't have to look at the wiki to understand, not only was it made to fuck with our minds and test our cerebrum and burning our eye sockets, in case if you did not know, this takes inspiration of Carl Jung's persona theory, making it canon to the psychology lore. I won't go into detail because it's fucking complicated, but basically humans are linked through the collective unconscious. Lane represents the omnipresent force created by the collective unconscious. All she needed was something to tether it together as a hive mind, the wired. Through the progression of the series, you can see how unhinged she is developing severe symptoms of schizophrenia and dissociative identity disorder, splitting into four identities. Lane is the antisocial, innocent little girl. Lena the Wired is Giga Chad, who takes no bullshit and kills people. Evil Lane is the cheap clone made to fuck with Lane. Then there's the fourth one, Goddess Lane. She is the manifestation of the collective unconscious. Her true intentions are a mystery. It's debated in the fandom 
if Lane is evil or not. Just like God, Eri and the Knights have plans to provide a gateway for humans to reach divinity. Same goal, same intentions, using Lane's powers. Breaking the barrier of reality and virtual reality. Name one anime where adults don't use the supernatural abilities of children for their own benefits. They try breaking down Lane, making her lose her humanity, then finally kill herself as they planned. She refuses, believing she's still human. Alice helped her realize she's not a program, go as far as making her bleed. Alice represents the human touch, companionship, a true friend. <laughs> episode 6, Kids, is one of the best episodes of the series. It shows more of Lane's humanity and her desire to protect the children after learning the deaths of the video game Phantoma and the failed kid experiment. In the end, Lane makes the final decision to keep the future of humanity on the right path. Lane is a celebration of human mortality and their imperfections. This anime shows the importance of preserving what makes us special. The creator, Ichaki J. Konaka, works would share this message. Serial Experiments Lane, Techno Lies, and Despera, an anime that will never get animated. An interview with the producer, Yasuyuki Yoeda, he made Lane with a set of values he took as distinctly Japanese. He hoped Americans would not understand the series the same as the Japanese would. This would lead a war of ideas over the meaning of the anime, hopefully culminating in a new communication between the two cultures. This anime was way ahead of its time. The idea how the internet will bring everyone together, friends who you have online will be no different from the friends you have in the real world. Living in a generation of information, keep in mind this idea never caught on. We still relied on DVD Netflix. The entire anime was supposed to be an advertisement for the video game, and the video game isn't canon to the anime, like most anime games. PSX Lane is an alternate story where Protocol 7 never existed, meaning the Knights and Deus never existed. It focuses on Lane's mental health. She goes to therapy like most of us should, where you open up cutscenes and audio logs, all of which are unorganized, so you the player can piece it all together. This was done to symbolize Lane's deteriorating mental state and her trying to fix her own mind. It's also terrifying that Lane is aware that she's in a fucking video game and knows that you're watching her every move. I'll probably make a video on this. Serial Experiments Lane isn't exciting. It's slow, heavily symbolized, it doesn't make any sense, and it's not made where you turn off your brain and let the monkey clap. It's not a masterpiece, but every masterpiece has its cheap copy. And I understand many that don't like it, and the ones who do like it won't shut up about it. I'm talking about myself, I won't shut up about it. The anime has so much charm and so much love put into it, Abe Yoshitoshi, one of the collaborators and friends of Konaka, after 20 years still makes artwork for Lane. PBS fought tooth and nail to try to get the anime broadcasted into western television. Even they thought it was amazing and was worthy to air right after Sesame Street. Coming up next, a Japanese cartoon about a mentally ill little girl with questionable intentions gets gaslighted to commit suicide by a bunch of adults with questionable sanity and then she gets naked in the end. It has such a devoted fan base, it even has a religion. I don't care if this is fake or not, this is amazing. Even though I tried summarizing this anime, there's still so much to unpack, like how deep the iceberg is. I'm not gonna lie, I've rewatched this anime like 20 times to understand and fully appreciate it, and it's definitely one of my all time favorites. It might not be a masterpiece, but this is definitely a series to be remembered. Right here, I'm right next to you. Forever.